You heard of negotiating at the barrel of a gun. Well, Ukrainian officials will be entering into negotiations with the Russians as Vladimir Putin flexes his nukes. Today, Ukrainian President Zelensky announced a delegation will be meeting with Russian counterparts on Monday. A short time later, Putin felt the need to escalate things yet again, ordering Russia's nuclear deterrence forces on the highest state of alert. Uh, former Director of National Intelligence uh, James Clapper joins me now. Um, Director Clapper, uh, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it very much. Uh, you know, what is your read, your initial read of, of Putin making the, this comment today that he's putting his uh, deterrence forces, his nuclear forces on high alert? Is this desperation? Is he trying to send a message to the world? Is it a little bit of both? What's going on here? Maybe all the above. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Jim, I really took notice when he issued uh, his statement, his warning about whoever, I've like, uh, got the quote here, whoever tries to interfere should know that Russia will be immediate, response will be immediate, and will lead to such consequences that you have never experienced in history. That got my attention. Uh, and it, of course, it implied the, the full range of his potential arsenal. Then the alert, uh, uh, raising the alert level of his nuclear forces, to me it strikes me as um, a bit of chest beating. Um, the Russian, the vaunted Russian army hasn't exactly performed to expectations. Uh, the fact has been pretty terrible. And I think he just needed to remind everybody, maybe for his own, uh, his own insecurity or his own ego, that, hey, we're still a nuclear power. And when you think about it, uh, you know, he's been in an uh, isolated bubble, uh, bureaucratically if not physically, for about 22 years, been brooding about this huge grievance on all the wrongs done to uh, Soviet Union, Russia, and it's all coming out now. And I, I, I think he's uh, anyone has lived in existence like that is not normal. And importantly, he's got nobody pushing back. Uh, that, that, that appears to be the case. But do, I mean, do you think he's losing it? I mean, uh, to, to I think, think that he's he can, a little, I think he's a little unhinged. I, I really do. And that's why these statements uh, bear watching. Uh, and I hope. Perhaps uh, someone in, the, in our government, uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, Chairman of JCS, is attempting to uh, reach or seek clarification of these statements. Uh, from the Russian counterparts. For, exactly. Exactly. Because, I mean, and what is your sense of what is people around him who can, uh, you know, keep that under a lid, you know, if Putin... I don't wants know. To, I mean, wants it, to do something what, dramatic. What we're what we've seen with these at a distance meetings he, that he has, because of his param paranoia about COVID, um, and the, the dressing down of uh, his, one of his senior uh, intelligence officials in public, uh, makes you wonder what is going on. Is, is anybody talking to him? Uh, is is anyone pre presenting an alternative view or pointing out pitfalls? To what he's doing, it sounds Kim Jong Un like. It's I doubt it. It, it sounds it. like something out of North Korea. Not well. <laughs> not, yeah, it, it doesn't sound good. Um, let me ask you about what you mentioned this earlier. You alluded to this: the Russians having trouble on the battlefield in Ukraine, more than expected. I, I guess they're having problems with fuel and morale, according to a NATO official, uh, and they're facing a stiffer resistance than expected. I talked to a Western diplomatic official earlier today who said the resistance appears to be stronger than initially expected by uh, Europe. Uh, what does that tell you about Russia's, their own intelligence assessments heading into this? Well, one thing that people have a hard time gauging is will to fight. Uh, we've had our challenges uh, doing that, and uh, I think the, the, what's happening on the battlefield in, in Ukraine right, is a combination of the unexpected stiff resistance uh, put up by the Ukrainians who do have a will to fight and the rather lackluster performance of the Russians, who are too spread out and don't have the logistical capability to provide sufficient fuel, ammunition, and food to their troops. Moreover, it doesn't appear to me that troops actually know what they're doing and don't seem to be very motivated to be invading uh, Ukraine. So that's a, that's, a, that's a commentary on their poor leadership. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about this throughout the afternoon, uh, Russia detaining... Uh, these protesters on the streets of uh, places like St. Petersburg and, and so on. 
it looks like Putin's propaganda about this being a war against neo-Nazis, he's been talking about neo-Nazis, hasn't landed, hasn't... Well, I mean, it's not get, maybe it's getting through to a, a segment of the population, for sure, people who just watch state media and, and that's it. Right. But if there are people on the streets of Russia in that you know, in that kind of quantity, in those numbers, well, that suggests that there are people who are saying, I don't believe Putin anymore. That's right. And I, I think this is, uh, to the extent that it does appeal to anybody in Russia, it's generational. Younger people don't buy it and don't want a war, as we've seen. And you got to be a brave soul to get out in the street and demonstrate against uh, Putin. So, uh, you know, I hand it to the, the Russian citizenry that's out, that's out doing that. And it, I, to me, it conveys a, a really cr crucial message that Putin obviously doesn't want conveyed. And what is your sense of how things, whether things could spiral out of control with Putin threatening, you know, uh, you know that he's, he's putting his nuclear uh, forces on alert, well, I think um, the, the U.S. and other allies dumping weapons right. into Ukraine, that's going to provoke him, obviously. It needs to be done, but it's going to provoke him. That this could that this could spiral out of control and get bigger than what we're seeing. First thing I can I worry about uh, is when the pain of, of these sanctions uh, sit in, which are really quite remarkable. The, the agreement now, the international agreement to impose them, and when the pain sets in, uh, I don't think Putin could sit still for that. I would look for uh, cyber attacks against our financial sector uh, as a first uh, first resort. Uh, I will say, and I don't mean to hyperventilate over this, but the Russians do have a uh, different attitude about the use of nuclear weapons than, than we do, principally because their conventional military force is, is not anything near what it was in the Soviet era. So they are quicker to, to, at least doctrinally, to resort to the use of tactical nuclear weapons if things go bad conventionally. So that, coupled with the statements, I think is uh, bears watching. I'll put it that way. All right. Uh, James Clapper, former director of national intelligence, thank you very much. We will be watching, as I know you will as well. Thank you very much. And I